Welcome to the Business Blast Podcast. I'm your host, Tyler Wagner. This episode is brought to you by Authors Unite. Authors Unite provides you with the support you need to finish your book. Best part is, after you finish your book, they take care of the entire publishing and marketing process 100% for you. So, if you want to become a successful author, make sure to check out AuthorsUnite.com. Now, let's jump into the episode. All right, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Business Blast podcast. I'm your host, Tyler Wagner. Uh, Today, I have Nico Hodel with us. He is the CTO of Started Up NYC, a New York-focused startup accelerator and media platform that provides web development, programmatic marketing, and investor relations services to innovative tech startups. So welcome to the show, man. Hey, Tyler. Thanks so much for having me on. Of course, man. Grateful to have you here. Um, Let's jump into the first one, Nico. The first one I have for you is what is the best story from your life that has an underlying valuable message? Yeah, that's a good one. I'm not sure if it's the best story, but uh, first thing that comes to mind is a story from when I actually visited uh, India. It was uh, one of my first uh, trips uh, sort of by myself backpacking. I did it when I was 17, uh, two weeks after I graduated high school, actually. And I had sort of grown up in a very wholesome um, community-focused uh, environment in Honolulu in Hawaii and uh, flew into uh, New Delhi. And immediately after flying in, I just um, left the airport and felt, you know, the Indian sun uh, sort of drying out my, my face and my eyes and my nostrils. And uh, <laughs> the dry heat was just co- totally annihilating me. And, and I stepped into a cab. Um, I thought that I would die, you know, while we're riding in that taxi. I thought that would be the end um, because, you know, the driving in India is pretty different than uh, driving in the U.S. or Europe. I mean, we're talking about uh, roads that are not necessarily roads and uh, the traffic laws are not very well enforced. And after this kind of harrowing taxi ride, I uh, got out of the cab and noticed that, uh, you know, a brick just flew past my head immediately. Um, and apparently they were doing a construction project, um, on a building, you know, directly adjacent to the cab that I got out of. And, um, it's a little different in the sense that they don't have, you know, a, a rope cordoning off an area, um, where you can't step by or, you know, they don't have any sort of indication. So, um, I think that sort of, uh, experience kind of set the stage for me and that like, it, it just gave me the ability to chance event. And um, it taught me a lot because, you know, I'd been interested in Eastern philosophy and some of those ideas along those same lines for years. And I got to actually embody it by uh, spending, you know, a full month in the end in India with stories just like that. Um, And uh, I think it was super valuable as an experience and anyone that's interested in um, kind of self-determining their path forward, whether they're an entrepreneur or uh, someone that uh, just wants to learn life lessons, I highly recommend going to India because um, it will definitely teach you how to deal with uh, uncertainty and and randomness. Wow, man. Yeah. So just wear a helmet or something, right? (laughs) In case the bricks get (laughs) Yeah, definitely. Please do more preparation than I did because um, I definitely could have uh, been more prepared. Yeah. Awesome. Um, the next one I have for you is what is the most valuable piece of information we should know that's within your expertise or industry? Yeah, so that's a good question. I, my uh, general focus is in programmatic marketing and um, like web development, particularly web development strategy. And um, the thing I always try to get people to understand uh, with that specialization is that I mean, there was a great quote by, I believe it was Picasso. Um, good artists copy and great artists steal. And I think the same lesson sort of applies to programming as a field. Um, What I mean by that is that in any kind of programming, we really are standing on the shoulders of giants. And even if you're coding something that's truly uh, unique or innovative, um, you know, you're doing it in a language that someone else has uh, set the groundwork for. You're using frameworks, you're using other tools And uh, even if you write your own programming language, you're using the foundations of computer science that are laid down by, you know, Alan Turing and some of these early innovators. So 
I think a lot of people get daunted um, by the idea that they have to sort of reinvent the wheel when they're learning how to program or when they're learning how to code. And um, the reality is that uh, you just have to kind of understand uh, the people that have set the groundwork before you um, and try to develop those sorts of relationships, uh, whether they're digital or in person, um, with those folks, uh, because uh, really you will be using um, on some level these dependencies uh, if you're a successful programmer. And really highly skilled developer programmers will be the first people to tell you that. And then what is your best piece of overall business advice, so not necessarily industry specific? Yeah, so my best piece of overall business advice would probably be that um, you should try to just focus on finding the right people as opposed to finding the right institutions, you know, and uh, generally for me, that meant that um, when I was younger, I, I, I put a lot of emphasis on, you know, the traditional educational in institutions. And obviously, when you're a teenager, uh, that seems very do or die, even when it comes down to, you know, the friendships that you form at that period in your life. And uh, I think that um, it makes more sense to find mentors, to find individual people that you can develop a relationship with um, in order to kind of develop your skill set, you know. So rather than focusing on, you know, leaning on X institution, whether it's uh, an educational institution or even a, a corporate institution, um, I would say always do the work to find the people. Um, that can be a guiding force for you and provide, you know, um, all the useful information and strategies and insights that you're looking for. And if you could give your younger self one piece of advice, what would that be? I would probably be along the same lines. And it, it's probably quite controversial to say that uh, you should uh, make traditional education uh, more as a secondary focus, but uh, I definitely to develop the relationship um, a mentor that was a, a very skilled programmer in his or her own right from an early age rather than um, sort of concentrating on classes and uh, friend groups and social politics of navigating my way through high school um, I, I would have definitely saved a lot of time you know I would have understood um, very foundational concepts in uh, programming and just in life and business in general from an earlier age if I had been able to track those people down. So I, I would have told myself, listen, um, find those people uh, in your life as early as you can, and uh, it'll just save you a lot of time down, down the line. And then kind of going down a different path, in your opinion, what is the key to happiness? Wow, good question. I mean, I think for me, the key to happiness is just to surround yourself with the right people. And it's a... Uh, Somewhat of a cliche answer, but I think it's it's absolutely true. Um, there has been some research done on people that consider themselves more or less happy, and generally, the people that consider themselves most happy, uh, whether you look at you know certain Japanese cultures, whether you look at Scandinavian cultures, there are people that have a really strong sense of uh, community in their life. Um, there are people that uh, have the sense that. Um, there are others around them that genuinely care about their well-being. And uh, I think that really sets the groundwork for things. And however you have to engineer your life uh, work-wise, business-wise, on a practical level to make that happen, to have people that genuinely care about you and to have that sense of community, I think uh, it's worth doing because I think that contributes to your overall happiness probably more than anything else. And then what is the best book that you've read and what was the number one thing you learned from that? Yeah, so my favorite book that I think probably pertains to your listeners a lot would be um, a book called The Startup of You. Um, it's written by Reid Hoffman, who um, was actually a founder of LinkedIn. Um, but uh, that book is amazing. It really taught me that being an entrepreneur is not really just about starting a business. It's, it's more of a worldview. It has to do with the way that you... Um, view your life, your career, um, your trajectory, uh, whether you're um, working for someone else or working for yourself. And I think that book is really valuable for people to read, particularly these days where the economy is shifting so rapidly and um, 
traditional corporate jobs are uh, no longer what they used to be, uh, for many people at least. Um, having a more entrepreneurial way of uh, viewing your career uh, can be really beneficial. And that book was super formative in, uh, in my life and the decisions that I made after reading. Hmm. I'll have to check that one out. I'm a huge fan of LinkedIn, so I like that. <laughs> um, yeah, highly recommend it. And then what is your favorite quote and why? My favorite quote would, uh, I would say it's uh, a quote by this uh, Lebanese author named Cahil de Gibran. Um, and he wrote a book called The Prophet, which is uh, probably my favorite book when it comes to matters of uh, you know philosophy and spirituality. Um, but there's a quote in that book that is work is love made visible. And uh, that really impacted the way that I wanted to engineer my work life. And I think it, it's quite far removed for many people, sadly, these days. Um, if you look at the statistics on you know, work engagement and satisfaction, uh, they're pretty dismal. And a lot of people feel really disconnected from the work that they do. And they really just do it as a necessity. And they try to find joy in, in their life in other places. And I, I don't think that that's necessary. I think that we're more than capable as a society and as individuals to uh, make work an act of love, you know, and to um, actually find passion in what you're doing. And I think it's, it's absolutely an endeavor worth pursuing, uh, however uh, you can make it happen. And uh, so in my life. Got it. And um Dude, thank you so much for coming on. The last one I have for you before we let you go is where's the best place for people to find you online? Yeah, so uh, I'm on all social platforms. Uh, you can find me on Instagram. My handle is Nico, so N-I-C-O underscore H-O-D-E-L. So it's Nico underscore Hodel. Um, Twitter, my handle is uh, Nick, at Nick Hodel. So however you want to find me, uh, Twitter and Instagram are probably the places that I'm, I'm most active. And then of course, uh, I'm on LinkedIn as well, just because I'm a big Reed Hoffman fan like you. <laughs> awesome, brother. Thanks again for coming on. Yeah, thank you so much for having me, Tyler. The podcast you just heard was published with Anchor. Got something you want to say to the creator of this show? Send them a voice message using the Anchor app, free for iOS and Android.